Hello, everybody. Welcome into Talking Fitchburg on this Friday, July 23rd, 2021. I'm Jeremy Crosby. Hope you're having a wonderful day and ready for a warm and sticky hot weekend. It's already muggy out there as it is. But hey, it's uh, going to be, uh, could be dry. Chance of storms over the weekend, but you can't complain. I mean, it's going to be uh, not too bad. A good uh, slip and slide weekend or pool weekend. That's why I'm kind of summing it up as uh, we got a busy show here coming up for you. Get you the latest headlines coming up in just a little bit. Uh, plus, uh, we'll check in with the Department of A Trade Consumer Protection. We'll be talking about medical billing, making sure that you uh, understand, kind of hear some of the complaints, understand uh, where some of the issues uh, come up. And we'll break that down for you here in just a little bit. Plus, we're checking in with the Fitchburg Police Department on the interim uh, police chief. And uh, I'm also going to say uh, Chad Brecklin, but not Chad. Uh, no, Matt Leahy will be here uh, on the show and uh, helping us out, uh, telling us what's going on and one of the stories that uh he did talk about uh or, or uh, we couldn't get an update right at the moment but we have an update now and that's where start of headlines is an arrest made in the hit and run uh, crash uh, over last weekend and says here yesterday uh, afternoon personnel from the fitchburg police department made an arrest in sunday's hit and run crash involving a seven-year-old girl on a bike uh, alexander hendis uh, uh Zach Gridges uh, of 18 of Madison was arrested and booked in Dane County Jail for probation of uh, uh, probation violation, a charge of hit and run causing injury felony and citation for operating uh, after uh, revocation, uh, operating without insurance and failure to notify police of an accident are expected to be sent to the Dane County District Attorney's Office by the end of the week. A break in the case uh, came Monday afternoon after a detective from the Fitchburg Police Department located the suspect vehicle abandoned in a parking lot over a mile away from the scene of Sunday's crash. Investigators worked Tuesday and Wednesday to collect additional evidence and identify the driver who was involved in the crash. Hernandez uh, was taken into custody without incident Wednesday. The seven-year-old girl was struck uh, in the crash, has been released from the hospital, and is recovering from her injuries. This incident highlights the duties of all drivers to maintain awareness of the road and know the responsibilities if they are involved in a crash. If involved in a crash, state law requires drivers to stop at or as close as possible to the crash scene, render responsible assistance, exchange information uh, with others involved parties and contact law enforcement if there are any injuries or reportable amount of damage. Uh, so great uh, work there on the Fitchburg Police Department uh, closing up uh, that case. Uh, we'll keep uh, and pass on any other information that comes about that. All right, Regional Transportation Plan 2050 public survey still out there. Still time to take that survey. The purpose of the con Tent, uh, or, or connect uh, Greater Madison Regional Transportation Plan, RTP, for the 2050 uh, is to identify how the region intends to invest in the transportation system to accommodate current travel demand and future growth while uh, setting investment priorities, balancing limited funds. You can join in on the planning process by taking the survey. Check out our website. We've got it labeled there, fitchwardwi.gov, and you can uh, take that survey, help us out. All right, turning our attention to the data snapshot here in Dane County related to COVID-19 cases. This latest uh, cases uh, have increased in during this 14-day period with an average of 14 cases per day. Number of people hospitalized with COVID-19 in Dane County hospitals is stable at 14-day average of 23 people hospitalized. Of the 16 cases uh, se uh, sequenced in this most recent two-week period, 13, per uh, 13 or 81% were uh, the Delta variant. Three vaccines available in the U.S. have shown to still provide protection against the Delta variant. The most effective way to protect yourself and other uh, or in our community from being impacted by the Delta is to get vaccinated. Go to the public uh, health uh, mdc.com for more information on that and uh, continue, <clears throat> excuse me, continue to do your part. I've got a bit of a cold today, so continue to do my part and uh, keep going here. Uh, BBB warns of shoppers uh, to be careful when shopping online for some Bucks gear. Yeah, if you're looking to get some of that Bucks merchandise, well, you want to make sure that you don't get scammed out of this. Scammers have been uh, known to create fake websites and other apparel and other sports memorabilia at unbelievable low prices and claim it's a licensed merchandise. Unfortunately, what consumers receive from those fraudulent uh, sites is cheap knockoff merchandise if they receive anything at all with uh, glued on logos, misspelled player names, poor quality, and so much more. One application, uh, one Appleton consumer complaint to the BBB said it was a bad fake jersey that was unwearable. The neck hole was too small for any human to put their head through it. So uh, this has been reported here in Wisconsin. BBB offers these tips. Be wary of deals that uh, seem too good to be true in search results 
when using the term uh, cheap Milwaukee Bucks jerseys if uh, the price of the items is significantly less than what it is other well-known retailer sites. This is a red flag and that might be a scam. Which such site offers Giannis on a coupo? Uh, well, I've never actually had to say that on this show. On a coupo? Is that how you say it, Andrew? On to go coupo? <laughs> you can't hear him, but he's, he's trying. He did better than I did. We'll just say Giannis for this uh, purpose. Uh, jerseys for $26, far below the $150 price tag that you would get it from uh, the pro shop. Research the company before you purchase. Of course, the company is unfamiliar. Check BBB.org to see if the BBB business profile or BBB scam tracker uh, to be seen uh, if anyone has reported this type of scam. And of course, uh, if you want to learn more information and report anything, contact the BBB or Department of Trade Consumer Protection. That information is on your screen. All right, that does it for our headlines. Coming up next, we open up our digest with uh, medical billing information, uh, specifically on scams, what you need to know and what you need to report. We'll break that down with you from Fire and Vague Trade Consumer Protection next right here on Talking Fitchburg. After you joined our family, it was like, I really do feel complete now. Our hearts are made stronger by how we treat others. Put her there. The light you share can impact those around you, but so can the darkness. Later, twerps. Did Pete saying mean things bother you? So when you reach out to another person, <laughs> take a moment to consider how they will feel and let your heart be the key to making a difference. Because of you, someone's entire day, year, or even life can change. In every heart, there's hope. Brandon met a girl on a dating app. He finally found the courage to ask her out. No answer. He started to panic. Was he being... Hey, sorry I didn't respond. I was driving. She must be a keeper. Welcome back into Talking Fitchburg. Joining me today from the Department of Aid, Trade Consumer Protection, Laura Sutherland is here. Laura, welcome back to the show. How are you doing today? I'm great, Jeremy. Thanks for having me. Thank you for uh, being a part of the show. And today we're going to talk about medical billing. Uh, certainly uh, uh, pre-pandemic, uh, you know, I think a lot of people were asking questions about medical billing and things were going on. Uh, but then uh, COVID hits and things skyrocket uh, as far as maybe more people uh, being in and out of the hospital, doctors, as it, you name it, it's going on. Uh, but ultimately, medical billing, I think, is complicated. Uh, overall, and uh, I'm so excited to talk about this with you today. Uh, so overall, uh, from your standpoint, what does uh, DATCP want you to know about medical billing? Yeah, so medical billing, you're right, it is complicated. And since we've been tracking uh, medical billing complaints at the department, it has been in the top 10 and in the top five in the last five years, um, in, you know, repeatedly. And, and why is that? Because we, um, we as consumers of healthcare have to be more and more involved in the choices that we make for healthcare and how we charge for healthcare. And, and they're, they're confusing, right? There's a, there can be multiple entities involved in each, um, in each billing cycle. It can be your insurance company, your care provider, your HMO, you know, what have you. Um, so it's, it can be, we're seeing a lot of complaints where people are doing what they should be doing. They're looking, they're looking for the information. They think they're told one thing and expect one thing and something else um, comes up on their bill. And so they have questions about it. You know, one example that we had um, is a family uh, that came to visit Wisconsin from Tennessee. And their child unfortunately got sick while he was here and they needed to go to urgent care. So they did what many of us would do and they looked online and they tried to find an urgent care location near them to bring their child in to get some care. And, and they did that and uh, they got the care that they went to get and then they got billed for emergent care, which is obviously significantly more expensive and has a different process required for it and with many insurance companies and a big deal. So they filed a complaint. They said, you know, we looked and we thought this was urgent care and then we got charged for something different. So the department is looking into that to see if there were disclosures or disclosures that weren't there or misrepresentations in the course of that care. Um, but that's just a, an, an example of the kind of ways in which consumers are looking at these issues, trying to make the right choices, looking at the information that's provided for them and it's not always straightforward. 
You know, another example we had was a was a Wisconsin resident over 50, um, which many of us know means it's time for our first colonoscopy. Um, if you don't know that, lucky you. Uh, but in the event, that's a, that's a time where you think it's a pretty straightforward process. Um, it's been done, you know, many people get it at the, over 50, um, and they have gone in for to get their colonoscopy as a um, screening um, to prevent, uh, to see if you have, you know, you may have colon cancer. It's a really important uh, screening that folks should participate in if they can. Um, so this consumer did that, um, and then they were charged. Uh, ended up having some polyps, and the and the the screening, which is charged differently, then got coded for um, uh, for, for preventative colonoscopies, which is which means um, which is a different charge, right? Um, and has an impact on your insurance, um, how much your copay will be, all that kind of stuff. So they filed a complaint because they thought they had done what they were supposed to do, and and uh, came in under a screening and were, were charged differently. So looking into that, that's a complaint the department has, looking into that to see if there were some misrepresentations or failure to disclose information that you're entitled to have. Um, but just a couple of examples of the difficulty. So, you know, what do we want to tell folks they need to do? Um, they First, you need, to, you need to pay your bills, right? Your medical bills need to be paid, whether you have insurance or not, it's important that they get paid. So. If you have a question about it, um, you should contact the source directly and and see if you can't get your questions answered. You know, we field a lot of these, as I say, it's in the top five of our complaints. And most often it's an issue of communication um, and, and misunderstanding. So go to the source directly, see if you can't resolve this issue with your um, your billing medical bill or not. I'm not saying that's going to be easy. I had to do that myself and it can take some time, but it's important that you first try to do that. If you have any questions about your health insurance coverage, you should go to your, your insurance carrier, try to get those questions answered. Um, and you need to um, make sure that you pay your bills and that you pay them uh, immediately after receiving services and then wait for reimbursement from your insurance company. Um, if you're having problems with your bill, you discuss it with a medical facility immediately. Don't let, don't let any time lapse on that. Um, and make sure that, um, you know, in some instances, you can get a monthly payment plan. Uh, but the more time you wait, the more, uh, the, the bigger issue it can become. And make sure you keep all your paperwork, right? Keep your bills, keep all the, keep notes um, or copies of any conversations you have through my chart or through email or what have you, but document, document, document. That's really, really important. Um, and if you're still having problems, give us a call um, at our at, at our hotline, 1-800-422-7128, and see if we can't help you um, mediate some of these complaints and see if we can't help you solve these problems. So you had mentioned about, you know, making sure that you you contact your insurance company right away. So if you get that bill um, and sitting on it. So if you do sit on it, you're not making those payments, you might be subject to fees and stuff. And most likely um, DATCP isn't really going to get you out of that necessarily. Uh, so uh, as, as a good reminder for those folks, you know, where what is that threshold that that you guys can help with? Where is that part? I mean, you're looking for you're looking for the mishaps in in the process, more or less, correct? That's right. And we, uh, to be clear, we have pretty limited scope when it comes to medical billing. Um, we don't have a medical billing law in the state of Wisconsin. We have an unfair billing law that doesn't cover medical billing. There, that's actually an exception. So what we have is a basic misrepresentation law. So if someone or some entity is misrepresenting something, that is when we would have jurisdiction to address those issues. So the urgent care example I gave you, if in fact there's a misrepresentation about it being urgent care and then they charge you otherwise, that would be an example of a misrepresentation. But by and large, um, the medical bill issues are ones of, of confusion and, and, mis and misunderstanding. And so as you say, um, you really do need to pay them as best you can. And if you can't get on a monthly payment plan because as the fees accrue and if you owe them, there's absolutely nothing the department will be able to do about that. Um, so again, um, 
keeping a, a, a treatment list, watching for when the statement, statements come in, reviewing the bills immediately when they come in. A lot of times you'll get a lot of them if you're unfortunately um, uh, sick and you you need a lot of care, you're gonna get a lot of paperwork, but the, way, the best way to avoid being misbilled or um, having issues arise is to stay on top of those bills, stay on top of those statements and review them immediately and when questions arise, um, get them answered as soon as you can. Yeah, great advice, uh, Laura. Thank you so much for uh, sharing this information and certainly uh, great resources out at your website. Uh, and uh, like you said, give it, give you guys a call, you know, call in the, the hotline if you have questions and uh, you guys can help uh, help anybody else at least uh, kind of figure out the process. Absolutely, we'd be happy to help. All right, uh, Laura, thank you. Always a pleasure having you on the show. Stay safe out there and we'll talk to you real soon. Thanks, Jeremy. You bet. We'll take a quick break. More to come. You're watching Talking Fitchburg. Type 2 diabetes can have a big impact on your life, but how can it be prevented? Well, the first step is knowing if you have prediabetes, a serious medical condition that puts you at high risk for type 2 diabetes. One in three American adults has prediabetes, but more than 80% don't know they have it. The good news is, prediabetes can be reversed, and for many people, healthy changes in their daily routine can make a big difference. Take the one-minute risk test today at doihaveprediabetes.org. If you love them enough to suck the snot out of their nose at 4 a.m., then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Well, welcome back into Talking Fitchburg. Joining me today from the Fitchburg Police Department, our interim chief, Matt Leahy. Matt, welcome into the hot seat. Thank you for having me. Glad to have you looking here. Looking forward to it. Look, I'm looking forward to it, too. You're our second interview of the year, and... So the uh, bar's studio. not set high, very high. You're about to set it. All right. We won't good. tell you who the first one was. All right. But you're you're gonna set the bar high here. Uh, glad to have you in here. Um, first and foremost, uh, glad to have you uh, stepped up into the role of interim chief. Uh, uh, I think congratulations in order, and a thank, thank you as well. Thank you. Uh, much appreciated. And you're filling in uh, for our update as well, which is so exciting. So we get to talk to you on multiple levels today. Uh, first and foremost, you get to break the news. Usually, this is a hot. You remember Jay Wilson days. I mean, he yes, used to break this. I know. Uh, so uh, if that isn't a clue for longtime uh, viewers here, uh, what do you got for our community night out? So the community night out, uh, thankfully, after the pandemic of uh, 2020, we are going to reinstitute the community night out this year, and it is scheduled for August 11th from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. at the Fairways Leasing Office or the Nine Springs Golf Course parking lot. We'll have refreshments, DJ, community uh, members, as well as uh, partners from outside agencies, law enforcement agencies. I guess the mission really is to just kind of bring everybody together and, I guess, uh, put on a platform to show community and um, governmental agencies coming together to make a safe community. It is an awesome event, and I'm so glad that we're taking it to different neighborhoods. Uh, talk about that first event that happened, well, now two years ago yeah. uh, at uh, James Hugel. Correct. It was an awesome turnout. That was a very large turnout. I was I was glad to be uh, part of it. I did not have to plan any of it, but uh, <laughs> that, that took a lot of uh, hours to bring together, and I'm glad um, the event was as popular and as beneficial as it certainly was in 2019. How important is it to take it around the community? So that's what this is all about now. Now Correct. we're getting it out of one centralized location and, and taking it to a, a park near you. Well, I think to highlight different communities throughout Fitchburg is kind of at the, at the core of the idea behind Community Night Out to identify those communities, whether it is um, uh, Hugo Park or now the Traceway, Nine Springs area. Or, or any area within the city, it's, it's important to provide those communities with the opportunity to be um, highlighted in a positive manner and to bring everybody together. Awesome. Uh, well, we'll definitely remind people of that uh, free event. Come on out, uh, say hi to the officers. It's a great time. And 
We did our show live there last year. We might have to set that up again. We'll see. Oh, come on you, down. You're going to be a guest? I will be there. You, <laughs> he said he would be there, but be he's there. not. he doesn't know if he's going to be a guest. Fine. <laughs> Fine. All right. Let's uh, jump into some uh, crime prevention tips. Uh, quick update uh, as part of this. Uh, we've still seen... Uh, reports of theft, burglary. Um, what do you have for an update on that front? So, uh, again, uh, we're still uh, being, our communities um, getting property crimes or being victim to property crimes again, um, whether it's burglaries or uh, vehicle thefts. Just highly encourage everyone uh, to be focused on crime prevention as much, much as they can when it comes to these types of crimes lock up your service doors to garages, make sure your garage doors are shut, make sure uh, valuables are taken out of your vehicles, especially keys, um, to try to reduce the number of, of victims within our community. Are most of these crimes, uh, are they crimes of opportunity, or are they almost always <laughs> what you just said, that it's an unlocked door? I, I mean, essentially, do this, that, or is that, that is a crime of opportunity. Uh, they, you know... The perpetrators of these crimes will just uh, go to communities and test out uh, the infrastructure of your homes or in your residence. And if they see an easy opportunity, like an obvious open garage door, they're going to uh, to take advantage of that situation. Now, we just had a um, burglary this morning, 2600 block of Richardson, where a vehicle was stolen. Uh, so it's it's. It's present, and people need to be aware and take whatever steps they can to uh, prevent uh, the crimes from occurring. We've talked about uh, see something, say something on this, um, which I think is a big part of helping sure. combat this, not only with the prevention tips, sure. but uh, where can people report, and what do you want people to report on to you uh, as far as maybe suspicious activity or anything that could help um as another tool to prevent this from happening. Sure. I guess it, it is kind of a fine line between what we want people to report. If it's somebody just walking down the, down the road, um, does it have any, is there any criminal element to it? Um, and so we want to be aware of people's just ability to just simply walk down the street. Um, but definitely if, if residents are seeing people walking into uh, garage doors or seeing uh, suspicious vehicles in the middle of the night blacked out driving up and down the roadways those are things that we would uh, highly encourage people to call uh, the police department on whether it be 911 or through our non-emergency line um, but in the moment instead of the next morning when uh, when the crimes have already taken place yeah, you got to report it, I think, for sure. And then, yeah, you're right. There's Absolutely. a fine line there for uh, sure. Uh, we uh, unfortunately had a hit-and-run uh, situation uh, over uh, the weekend. Correct. Uh, you did have some updates there. Uh, first, uh, what had happened, and then we can talk about the update. Yeah, so we had a very unfortunate event uh, in on High Ridge Trail where a small child, a six-year-old child, was struck by a vehicle. It was a hit-and-run. Uh, luckily, uh, the child did not suffer any significant injuries, which is which is a blessing, of course. Um, but uh, there will be an update coming uh, forth soon. Uh, the act, uh, the investigation is still very active, and we are working on a variety of uh, leads and information. So, uh, s probably some some news decent to come. News to come. Yeah. That one. Nope. Uh, good to hear. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, wait to hear uh, what comes about uh, uh, that. Uh, finally, uh, uh, some outreach on. Uh, You've got your community feedback going on sure. here on your policies. Yeah. Uh, where are you at in that process, and what do you need people to do? So uh, if, if people don't already know, uh, we are in the midst of updating our policy and procedure manual, uh, utilizing the assistance of Lexipol, which is a uh, uh, nationwide well-known um, provider of policies for public safety agencies, specifically law enforcement. And uh, during this process in updating our policy and procedure manual to, to utilize Lexipol and their expertise in, in policy and procedures. We are, after we assess or edit whatever policy we need to, uh, to edit, we then uh, send those policies out to our website uh, on the uh, fitchburgwi.gov website uh, for the police department and there are a whole variety of different ways that people can provide feedback, whether it be a, a phone line, uh, a comment box, or sending an email. Uh, and highly encourage uh, citizens, 
or community stakeholders or whomever to to provide whatever feedback um, they can and to be part of this um, wholesale policy change through our department. Yeah, are you guys, and you've seen a lot of feedback, uh, and where are you in, in the process then? So we're currently uh, probably about halfway through the, the policies that we need to review from an internal standpoint. Uh, we have a group of individuals within our department uh, that are meeting fairly regularly, almost weekly, to review about uh, five to seven policies each week. And then um, hopefully those policies won't take the remainder of the year, that whole update, but I anticipate probably later this year we'll, we'll be completed with the project. And then after the policies are um, reviewed by the community as well as department members, which lasts for approximately 21 days, uh, we gave it about a three-week review process for, for everybody to provide feedback based upon whatever feedback that we would get from other department members or the community. We may make changes. We may make uh, grammatical uh, changes to the policies just to make it a little bit more uh, user-friendly and understandable by everybody that's going to have uh, access to those policies, uh, then we'll, we will um, enact those policies within the department. So instead of doing all of the policies at once for the entire department, which is probably a little bit unfair for everybody to read however, <laughs> yeah, right. however many policies, we'll just kind of uh, slowly trickle those policies out for the for the officers and department members. Cool. Well, that's a full update right there. Yeah. All right. Well, that's it. You made it through your first one. Wow. Well, easy? Yeah, easy peasy. That's all right. Yeah. Um, if more people want to find out more on what's going on with the uh, F Fitchburg Police Department or beyond, uh, how can they do that? Oh, they can contact us 24-7 if they have any questions through our non-emergency line. Uh, otherwise, you can always hit up our Facebook page that's updated regularly or the, the department website. Fantastic, Matt. Congratulations again, and uh, looking you. forward to having you back here next month. Appreciate it. All right, Matt Leahy, uh, your interim uh, police chief here for the city of Fitchburg on your police update. We'll take a quick break. More to come. You're watching Talking Fitchburg. We're all just trying to keep things running for those who rely on us. That's why we don't have time to be sick with the flu. We don't have time for delays. Ready! We don't have time for spills. Next. We don't have time for setbacks. Let's be real. Getting the flu shot helps you fight the flu. Get a flu shot for yourself and those around you too. See on page four that the projections need to be blood. Next Thursday? Seriously? Thursday? Can't do that. Uh-uh. This is really inconvenient. I have yoga that day. I have no time for this. So. I can't do Thursday, but I can do Friday. Disasters don't plan ahead. You can. Talk to your loved ones about how you're going to be ready in an emergency. Don't wait. Communicate. Into talking Fitchburg, wrapping up the show for the day. I want to thank our friends at Department A Trade Consumer Protection and Matt, uh, that'd be Lara, and then of course uh, Matt Leahy from the Fitchburg uh, Police Department, uh, interim police chief, uh, giving us the update. So excited for the crime prevention picnic here in the city of Fitchburg, and we'll remind you as that gets closer. As we wrap up, please stay safe out there, stay hydrated. It's going to be warm out there. We talked a lot about it on the update today. Want to make sure that you do uh, stay. Uh, weather ready for the weekend not only for severe weather but that hot weather as well and if you're beating the cold like or beating the heat like i am in the cold you can watch back tv just saying have a cool weekend <laughs>